I'm standing so you know it's serious. Hello everybody, this is Sarah Soiled Plant and welcome back to my channel. I had a few requests to make a spider mite video. I am notoriously just taking care of spider mites all the time. My main obsession in plants is Calathea, which are just spider mite magnets. I also have a few other plants that just get spider mites all the time, no matter what I seem to do. So I thought I'd go over what my spider mite treatment is and what sort of preventative stuff you can do in order to minimize the chances of you getting spider mites and also treating them when you happen to get them. Just in case you're only interested in the treatment portion of all of this, I will put timestamps in the description below for you. But if you're curious about other spider mite things, I'm gonna brush up on that just in the beginning real quick. First of all, what is a spider mite? Um, it's actually not an insect, it's an arachnid. So they're actually related to spiders, but all bugs kind of behave similarly. You know, they lay eggs, they hatch, they eat, they lay more eggs and then they die. Like it's all the same type of cycle. So what they are isn't necessarily important to how you treat for them. Spider mites do have five cycles of life, basically starting from eggs and going all the way into adults. They can eat your plant and lay eggs in a majority of their lifespans. The process of going from an egg into a full-blown adult usually takes about 14 days. If you happen to have ideal conditions, like especially it being very warm, then the egg through adult doesn't take 14 days, it takes more like seven to 10 days. That's important to remember for your treatment cycles as far as you know, getting rid of spider mites because some things are better at killing adults and some things are better at killing eggs, but you have to account for eggs sitting there and hatching and starting the whole cycle again. So just know that going from an egg all the way to an adult takes anywhere from seven to 14 days. One common misconception that I hear all the time and something I believed myself for a long time was that spider mites are not likely to occur in high humidity environments. As you can tell from my humidifier going in the background, I am pretty good about keeping my humidity at least above 50% in my house. And then I have a greenhouse where it's usually around 70 to 80% all the time. And I get spider mites all the time still. One thing higher humidity can help with is the fertility of the spider mites goes down a little bit. Now, I'm not sure if that means they just lay less often or if that means they lay fewer eggs, but either way, you know, spider mites can grow so rapidly because each spider mite lays about 100 eggs every time they lay. So if it is slightly more spaced out, it's not likely going to stop your spider mite infections. So just keep that in mind if you're someone who has high humidity or if you have lower humidity in your house and it's a little drier, don't feel like you are targeted by spider mites everybody gets them. I mean, hopefully not everybody gets them. I hope you don't get them, but if you do, this video is for you. So what spider mites actually do is they will bite and suck the juices and the sap out of your leaves. The easiest way to do this is by going on the underside of the leaves where you have more access to the veins, which is where a lot of those juices and a lot of the sap is coming from. They're a lot juicier and that's what they feed on. So that's why you will typically find spider mites on the underside of your leaves as opposed to the tops. Then breeding and feeding on the other side, underside of the leaf is also why you're less likely to catch them early because generally speaking, when you're looking at a plant and like the ones behind me, you are seeing the tops of the leaves all the time. You're not really looking at the bottom sides of the leaves. So it's much easier to sort of miss when you have spider mites early on. As they bite and suck out the juices out of the plant, it'll show on the tops of the leaves as just a tiny, tiny little yellowing dot. You won't even really notice it so much um, until it gets really bad. It starts off as little dots and you'll kind of see them all over the leaf. And then all of a sudden, large chunks of the leaf will start to yellow. It'll start to sort of look like it's sickly. And I can kind of show you some examples. I'm in the middle of my spider mite treatments right now, so I can't show you a really bad case, unfortunately. I mean, maybe someday, I'm sure it'll happen again. On the top of my Instagram, there's a bunch of those little save stories along the top. I do have one dedicated to spider mites, so you can see what that example looks like. So one example of this that I will show you is my Calathea Zabrina. This one has started looking a little sickly. As you can see, it's always been a little scraggly, but I noticed that it started getting droopy. Now to me, droopy just means like it looks a little dehydrated almost. If the leaves of your plant start to look a little sickly 
look like they're kind of underwatered when they're not underwatered. The leaves start discoloring. So sickly looking leaves is kind of what you're going for. Slightly yellowing, especially yellowing on the inside. It's kind of hard to tell on camera but you know your plants and when they look healthy, they're nice and green and vibrant, but if they start looking a little like they've got jaundice almost, where there's like a little bit of yellowing underneath, a little bit of browning all over the place, just generally speaking, you should check your plant. So whenever I see a plant that looks either droopy, sad, discoloring, all of that, I kind of go through my action item checklist. And this is something I do for every single plant, no matter what. The first thing I do is check if it's watered. The second thing I check for is lighting conditions just to make sure everything's okay. The third thing I look for is bugs. Um, I have had thrips once, I get mealybugs on occasion, but I get spider mites all the time. And I think the reason I don't get a lot of those other bugs is because I do treat for spider mites. I feel like spider mites are the toughest to get rid of and they're also the most deadly to your plant. And the fourth thing to check is basically just, do you have the right soil? Is it compacted? Is it root bound? But those are the four things I look for whenever a plant kind of looks sickly. Now, once spider mites have kind of taken hold of your plant, you should be able to tell by looking at your plant up close. It's hard, you can't tell from afar, you have to get all up in there. The first thing I check is I check the underside of the leaves. Now I've cleaned this one a few times, it definitely needs another clean. And I actually found, I've been inspecting it since I've been holding it, and it does have a slight amount of webbing on one of the leaves. So I'm definitely going to do a full treatment of this table basically after this video is over. It's due for one anyway, so this doesn't surprise me that I'm finding webbing on it. But one thing to look for is you wanna look on the back side of the leaf. Now the places you're looking, you're looking along the vein here. Depending on the plant, your leaf will have like little ridges along the actual leaf, not just along the vein and they will nestle in all of the little crooks and crevices. You also want to look at these little grooves up by the top of the leaf. Any sort of little pockets, they will just hide in because it's safe for their eggs and less likely to blow off in case there's wind. You know, all that natural selection stuff. In order to stay on the plant, if you are a bug, you want to be on the underside, you want to be in the grooves, all of that. So that, those are the places you want to look. But one thing I can tell, if you look at the front of this leaf, this leaf right here, you'll notice the discoloring on the bottom here. That is a sure sign that you've got a bug problem. If you're looking on the back side of the leaf, you can actually see through it on, at those parts. On the very edges right here, you can see through the leaf. That is a sure sign that you've got spider mites. And this one, this one leaf in particular has it pretty bad. The whole plant kind of does. The funny thing is I didn't even get spider mites from the Calathea. The Calathea were not at fault here. They are just the victims of the spider mite rampage I'm going through. The spider mites actually came from my Philodendron plumini, which apparently, while one of my favorite plants, is also just notorious for having spider mites. So lo and behold, Every time I did spider mite treatments, I never treated for it because I'm like, oh, it's a philodendron, it's fine, I won't do treatments on it, I'll just do my calatheas on occasion. Well, lo and behold, a few weeks ago, I was checking it out, I was looking at it, and it was covered, covered in spider mites, covered in webs, it was terrifying, and I immediately went and segregated that plant. So if you have spider mites like this, what do you do, right? The first thing you wanna do is quarantine, if you can. For me, I feel like once something on this table gets spider mites, the whole thing has spider mites and I treat it like it all has spider mites. If you can separate it out, I would. Now this is the only Calathea in the collection that seemed to take it the worst. There's a few others that aren't doing great either, but generally speaking for me, because they're all on top of each other, I just assume they all have it and treat it. Yeah, that's enough background. We can just go into what I do to treat for spider mites. The first thing I wanna mention is this stuff. It's by Bonide, 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 I don't know, but it's the Systemic Houseplant Insect Control. It does a really good job of just protecting against a lot of bugs, but like what it is is a little granular powder. And what you do is you sprinkle it on the top of your soil and then it gets sucked in through the roots and then through the roots it'll go up into the plant and then the things that munch on your plants will consume it and die. So that means do not, and I repeat, do not use this outside. It even says right here, only for containerized plants, you do not want this getting into soil in the ground. In order to use this, what I do is I sprinkle it on the top of the soil when the soil is dry 
and then I use a fork to basically agitate it a little bit to get it an inch or two into the soil line. Also, you don't wanna eat this stuff, so I use a fork that I just reuse strictly for this purpose, and I keep these kind of stored together. And then that way there's no confusion over which fork I used or any chance of me consuming it myself. So that is what I do. On the top here, they have kind of the dual sided open where you can either scoop it in or sprinkle it in. Every time I use it, I basically open the sprinkle side. When you use this, you do wanna use a mask because you don't wanna breathe it in. It has a little bit of powder that kind of kicks up when you spray it or when you spray it, when you sprinkle it. So you basically don't wanna breathe that in. But once you have a good amount in the soil, you can kind of see that it's a little kind of gray powder substance. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fork and just kind of stick that in and kind of agitate it a little bit, disturb that top layer of soil and get it in there. Also that helps you spread it around a little bit because sometimes when you're sprinkling powder into an area, you can get like a little side heavy. So it definitely helps to be able to kind of sprinkle that in everywhere. And then after that, all you do is water as normal. And I make sure to use this every about two to three months because the instructions say two and I'm lazy, so I say two to three. That is one preventative treatment I use that will not help you much with an active spider mite infestation, but it's a good thing to keep them at bay as much as possible. I really don't have an issue with gnats or thrips or mealybugs. I think it's because I use that stuff. It really prevents a lot of different things. I just like to use it as a sort of general maintenance for the plant as far as keeping bugs at bay. It might help with spider mites, it might not, but that is what I use and that's the reason I bought it. I bought it to help prevent spider mites and I'm not sure if that's what's helping or if it's just my topical treatments. Either way, I just wanted to let you know what I do. The next thing I do, and I will be showing you footage of me actually doing this, as far as topical treatments go, I have a two-step process. The first step is to rinse it down with basically alcohol and water. It is 50-50 alcohol and water with a few drops of liquid dish soap. What I do is I spray down each individual leaf, pretty much like one spray top, one spray bottom, a couple extra if it's bigger. And then I take an old makeup brush, old cheap garbage makeup brush. The reason I say old and crummy makeup brush is because you want it not to be super, super soft. You want it to have a little bit of like agitation going on. You want to be able to kind of scrape into those little grooves and crevices. So if you have an old makeup brush, that works. If you do have to go out and buy a makeup brush, I would really recommend going to like a dollar store type of thing. If you don't have those, try e.l.f. makeup brushes, but only buy like the super cheap, super, super cheapest one they have. So many makeup brushes nowadays are such good quality that they aren't scruffy enough and they're not like coarse enough. But this is one that I had left over from like a makeup kit that I had when I was a child. So it is not good quality and it is just perfect. And I also recommend it being about this size so you can get in all the little grooves while also not taking a million years. So yeah, I take the spray bottle. I do like spray, spray, underside, spray, spray. And then I take my brush and I do one of these. I make sure to get every single surface of that leaf but I also make sure to pay special attention to all the little grooves, every single sort of either side of the veins. I wanna make sure I get in every single little crevice I can. I also spray the stems and I go up and down the stems as far down as I can. Once you are done doing every single leaf, and I do mean every single leaf, so let me tell you, doing a plant like this one is a nightmare. And I know this, sometimes I get lazy and I just douse it and then just like kind of go over the whole plant. But I really, really recommend if you're trying honestly and earnestly to get rid of spider mites, do every single leaf. Just trust me on this one. It's of course so much easier to skip steps and to kind of ease your way through it. But trust me when I say it'll work much better if you follow everything by the letter. Once you're done getting every single leaf, what you wanna do is let it dry. So alcohol, generally speaking, dries really, really fast but because it has the water and the soap in it, it does take a few extra minutes to dry. I would say probably 15 minutes will do it, maybe 10, gauge it. You know, if you're looking at the plant and it doesn't look wet, go on to step two. The next step of my topical treatment is Captain Jack's. So I actually buy Captain Jack's in a large concentrate bottle and then I mix it. You can buy this in a bottle or you can buy it in concentrate and mix it yourself. I actually put a note on the back of my bottle that for a 16 ounce container, which is what this is, 
I have to put in half a tablespoon of the concentrate. And so having this note on here makes it really easy to refill whenever I need a refill. And so with the Captain Jacks, basically I go nuts. I spray every leaf. I spray the top of the soil. I spray the undersides of the leaf, down the stem. I want it dripping, dripping, dripping wet. That is what I do with the Captain Jacks. So after your Captain Jack step is done, what I typically do is I will just let it sit and wait for it to like do all its dripping, all of its stuff, whether it's in your tub, if it's in your kitchen, living room, wherever it is, after you spray the Captain Jacks down where it's dripping, 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 let it sit there until it's not dripping anymore. Basically, if you're concerned about the surface getting little droplets of liquid on it, just wait a few minutes before putting it back. So that is what I consider a full treatment. Um, a full treatment I would do once a week and then in between about every three days, spray it down with Captain Jack's again. Doing just Captain Jack's is kind of my supplemental treatment. So basically when I see spider mites, I do the old one, two method. And then I do that once a week, sometimes every two weeks if I'm being lazy, but I try to do it every week. A lot of times I will plop in front of the TV. I will have the plants straddled between my legs and I will just go to town while I'm watching TV. It's just a good way to pass the time so you're not losing your mind looking at every single leaf. It's a way to make the process not seem like torture. In between your full treatment, depending on how bad it, your outbreak is, if you're seeing webs everywhere, maybe you wanna do it more often, but generally speaking, in between the time when you do your first and second treatment, so right at the three, four day mark, you wanna go in just with Captain Jack's. I use this as kind of like a stopgap measure just in case something happens to hatch in the interim. But what I do is I basically just spray down just with the Captain Jack's, you know, take them off the table, spray, 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 drip, 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 let it sit there and then put it back. It seems like it's a lot of work, but compared to the alcohol step, this doesn't take very long at all. So it's not too bad, I promise. So how often should you repeat this? I would say at least two weeks. If you wanna be certain, do it three. So what's gonna end up, what your schedule is gonna end up looking like, is basically full-on treatment, Captain Jack's, full-on treatment, Captain Jack's, full-on treatment, Captain Jack's. Once you get past that point, you can keep going if you want, but honestly, as far as like sanity goes, that's basically a month's worth of treatments. Another thing I'd like to point out as far as preventative goes, um, Captain Jack's is like my go-to for everything. I used to use neem oil and I found that it didn't help anything and it also smelled kind of funny. This doesn't have much of an odor and it dissipates really quickly. And I like the fact that it's not an oil. I don't know, I find it weird to put oil on plants, essential oils, anything. Like it just, it, weir it weirds me out for some reason. So I don't like using that as a treatment. But I've been using just Captain Jack's for a long time. And as a prevention for all of my plants, everything down to like cactuses, succulents, pothos, everything, what I'll do is I take this and just kind of spray them down to where they're dripping, just like once a month. So when you're doing like one of your in-betweens, I'll just kind of go around the house and spray everything, everything with this stuff. That is why I recommend getting the concentrate. This lasts a really long time. So I'm gonna do some quick math for you. So a fluid ounce is about four spray bottles full, right? So one fluid ounce equals four spray bottles and there's 32 fluid ounces in this concentrate bottle, which means you can make about yeah, 128 bottles with one of these. And this was like $25, something like that. So it lasts a really long time. So while it seems like a lot and that you're going through a lot, if you do the concentrate route, you'll get your money's worth for sure. But that is basically everything I do for my spider mite treatments. I do this every two to three months, put it in the soil, rinse it through, and then Alcohol spray for first treatment, Captain Jack's for second. Do that once a week and do a full spray of Captain Jack's in between. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that this video came out late, but I have a little bit of news. I managed to snag myself a house. I got an offer accepted this week. So that meant I had to jump through a lot of hoops to make sure I got everything in order, including my financing and payments and EMDs, all that good stuff. 
I was able to do that this week because I wasn't filming. I'm just very excited to finally get a house, especially in this market, and I feel like I wasn't even ripped off. Maybe? That's definitely hard to come by right now, and I consider myself extremely lucky to have found something, and the sellers are just being just amazing angels. But yeah, that is why I'm late this week, so I'm very, very sorry, but it is for a good reason, and it's for a celebratory reason. Thank you for being so agreeable. Thank you for watching my video, and I will catch you next time. Bye!